Hello, I'm back. I'm finally getting to that neural network playlist which left off in uh, May and I'm continuing it. Now you might be watching, again, you might be watching in the future when it's all been completed, but you can, as you can see some time passed. And uh, here I am again now. Uh, the last video in this playlist w looked at uh, vector math and I believe I looked at adding, uh, well I can actually look it up here. The last thing I did was this function multiply, which was simply multiplying a matrix by a scalar. So taking each element of a matrix and multiplying it by a single number. Now, you also might notice here, matrix.prototype.multiply. What is that? Well, since I last did these videos, I have started adopting ES6 classes. Class is a template for creating an object that's part of ECMA scripts version six yada, yada, yada. I have a whole playlist about that stuff. If you don't know about classes, you can go and look at those tutorials. But before I move on and finish the vector, the matrix math that we need to build this neural network, I want to rewrite all of the, what I have so far with ES6. So that's all I'm going to do in this video. Okay, so let's actually do that. First, let's wander over. I was first building a neural network object. The idea of a neural network is having input nodes, a hidden layer and output nodes. So let me first change this to be a class. Class neural network. And then once I have a class, this constructor function actually can now become constructor, call constructor. And you know what, what the, the, the method that I'm kind of adopting is when I pass arguments in, I actually give those arguments uh, parameters, I guess in this case, in the constructor definition, I give those parameters the same name as the properties attached to the object, and they are differentiated by, <laughs> say it with me, <gasps> this dot. That's right. Okay, so, um, so there we go. So now I've converted the neural network class, it wasn't a class before, but the constructor function into an ES6 class. Now I've got to do the same thing with the matrix constructor function. So this was the matrix constructor function, and I now want this to be a class called matrix, and I'm going to put this around everything, and ah, I don't know what Adam wants me to do, but okay. Um, and then <laughs> this constructor function is now called constructor. This is what happens in the constructor, and this is just the randomized function. All of these functions that are attached to the prototype can just be written by their name inside of the class. This is add, and this is multiply, and that's what we're going to be working on in the next video. All right, so, so I, I, in a moment I want to check, let me, let me check to make sure this is like still working. So if I go to the browser, refresh the page, I should be able to say things like let m equal a new matrix three, three by three. I should be able to say console.table m and I can see, oops, nope, <laughs> I made this mistake in my previous videos, console.table uh, m.matrix and you can see there it is. So this seems to be, and I could say m.add the number five and then I could look at it. So it still seems to be working. I have a matrix that's three by three, it gets, it by default, it's filled with zeros. Um, if I add five to it, it looks like five. If I say m.randomize, now I can look at it again, it has random numbers, so it's still working. That's good. Um, now, here's the other aspect of this. One thing you might notice is that I'm doing a lot of loops and array operations. Like I'm saying, hey, for every element of this array at index i, at index j, do this thing, et cetera, et cetera. There are actually, you probably know this already, I'm a bit slow <laughs> to catch up with these things. There are a bunch of useful array functions. I often think of them as ES6, like this video is about converting it to ES6, but really they, they've been around before ES6. And these are those, these functions called like map, uh, reduce is one, a fill is one, and a filter. I actually don't remember what filter does. I know what these do. And I think having access to using some of these array functions will make this matrix 
will be useful in the development of this matrix library. However, for simplicity's sake, as I go on into the next video, I am still going to do all of the uh, matrix math operations in the sort of longest, long-windedest way. <laughs> That's not actually a word, but in a very long-winded way. Um, then at the end, I'll try to come back and, and, and uh, use some of these. And I, and I should mention that, where am I going with this? Eventually, this, I want to learn and understand all of these matrix operations and write the code for them to kind of get my hands in there and figure it out. But in the end, I'm going to actually take out all of this stuff and replace all of the matrix operations with a library from Google called deeplearn.js. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more about this library and a, a helper library where deep learn can use with P5 in future videos. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. I'm now ready to kind of like get back up to speed. And the things that I need to do are finish this matrix class with more useful matrix math operations. I need to be able to multiply two matrices together and understand what it means to do that. Um, and then also, um, um, ah, and then uh, finish this <laughs> to add the rest of the functionality for the neural network that uses, that stores all the pieces of the neural network in these matrices and implements the algorithm. So I'll be getting to all that stuff. So see you if in the next video. Wait, this video is not over yet. <laughs> I forgot that I should also replace var with let. Replace all.